Hello, this is Mr. Beck, and this is part five in uh, my series on working with a simple paint application. Again, this is designed for my eighth grade Android programming class. At this point, we have an application where when you click the screen, we have a dot that follows the touch event. We can change the color of that dot, and that's about it. Um, we're going to add a couple of buttons now to this layout. Uh, that's our next step. So I'm going to go ahead and, and down here inside of layout, we're going to open our activity main.xml, which is something we've worked on quite a bit in, in class. And yeah, this is the time when I need to note this is a frame layout. Frame layouts are great if you're going to try to build a game because you can stack items on top of one another. What uh, appears, this is our panel view here. This is going to appear now at the bottom of the stack. And anything else we drop, okay, in order here, will appear on top of that. So it's easy to stack a couple of buttons on top of a canvas view, which is what we're going to do. We're going to add two buttons now to this. So I'm going to go to my graphical layout, and I'm going to do this the easy way. I'm going to grab a button and I'm going to slide it on there and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to choose uh, other properties, right? And um, I'm going to go to layout parameters, layout gravity, and I'm going to say bottom because I want this to the gravity of this button. I want it to be all the way at the bottom. Okay. And that's going to drop this button to the bottom. Well, let's let's create another one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose um, other properties, layout parameters, layout gravity, bottom. And now it's on top of my first button. The easiest way for me to sort of sort this out is this is the first button. This is the second button. Um, I'm going to split it like this. I'm going to say, well, yeah, I want it to be on the bottom but I also want it to be on the right, okay, like that. And if I save that, you can see in the graphical layout, I have now oh. – excuse me. Um, I, I put that in the wrong spot. I wasn't paying attention. I'm going to put it where it says layout gravity. Yeah, not text. Um, I essentially just made the button a little bigger by adding more text there. Um, bottom – and then right, and this way the gravity will be set so that it's at the bottom and the right. So now we've got two buttons, one on the left and one on the right. And if you check out the game I have on the market, Poker Flip, you'll see that I've got two buttons on the left and the right like that uh, that allow you to kind of drive around a little bit. So that's uh, just a user interface that uh, gives the user a couple of easy buttons to work with there. Okay, we also need to initialize these buttons inside of our main activity, and we've done this before in class. Here's our onCreate function. All right, and I've got some, some craziness in here. Just pay no attention to the craziness. Right at the very end of my onCreate function, I'm going to do a simple Google, and you know, the easiest way to create a button and get it set up is just to Google, ready, Android button, okay? And uh, the developer site here, the API for this one's real good. It gives you everything you need. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy my button code here, and everyone in class should be familiar with this. And I'm going to paste two buttons, okay? And a simple Control-Shift-O is going to organize my imports and import the button, all right? And this first one I'm going to call button. And in the XML file, we can see that the first button has an ID of button one, the second button ID button two. So we need to keep that in mind. And the ID here is going to be button one. Okay. So we've created a button here and we are associating it with our XML class as button one. We've got our on click ready to go. And I'm going to call this one button two. And it has the ID button two, and 
one thing a lot of people tend to forget is to use the instance here, the correct one, button two. So all this stuff matches up. Okay, so let's go into our getter setter class and let's look at the panel now. What are we going to use these buttons for, right? Um, I think we're going to use these buttons um, to increase and decrease the radius of the circle. So uh, here I've got this uh, draw circle. It's got X, Y, and the third parameter there is radius. So let's go into getter setter class and let's create a static variable to hold that public static and it's a float as well radius equals and I'll set it equal to our starting value so at the beginning of the program we've got 30 built in there and then inside a panel I'm now going to replace the radius of this drawn circle to get our setter dot radius okay and so it'll be 30 now at the beginning well, now we can go over to our button clicks and inside of the on click for the first button, I'm going to go ahead and say getter setter dot radius equals getter setter dot radius plus we'll say 10. And the second button, we'll go ahead and we'll subtract from that so that when the button is clicked, it gets smaller. Okay, so now we have two buttons that are increasing the value of radius inside of getter setter. And our panel class is going to draw the circle based on that radius. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run this program. And in the last video, I think the emulator kind of glitched out a little bit but here we are and the button follows us around we can change the color of course but when I click the first button now the radius is increasing by 10 every time and if I click the second button it gets smaller all right um, let's let's do one more thing while we're here okay every time we touch the screen we set a static value for this circle right let's make it let's make it drop let's click and make it just sort of fall um, you can do that inside of on draw and that would be the the Y value and I believe we need to add to Y to make it move down so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say okay every time on draw method is called which is quite a bit I'm going to subtract, I'm going to add to the value y. So I'm going to say getter setter dot y equals getter setter dot y plus, uh, let's go ahead and say 0.5. I'm not sure what we're going to get out of that. But um, so if you click the screen and you set a y value, great. But then every other time after that, we're going to change it. Okay. And uh, watch what happens when we run this. You can see that the value of Y is constantly changing as the screen is being refreshed. And if I click, the ball continues to drop. And uh, let me give that a little bit of a, a higher value. I think I'm gonna go over here and uh, I'm just gonna say instead of, let's make it two, make it a solid two. And uh, let, let's see how that works. It'll be a little bit faster. And there it goes, and it's a lot more visible, that motion. So no matter how we click, and you can see it'll get bigger, everything plays. And uh, as the screen is being refreshed, the value of Y is changing, and we have a point here that we can change the color of and everything, and it drops down as we click. So that concludes this video. Uh, thank you for watching. I may include one more video where we go in and modify the behavior of this icon up here in the action bar, our undo icon. Um, I haven't done anything with that yet. I may or may not uh, include a new video. And hey, check this out. You can see these buttons down here are on top of the canvas because you see the paint appears underneath it as well. So, all right. Thanks for watching and I hope you built a successful application. 
Uh, if you're in my class, you know you can expect a quiz here soon. So uh, take a look at it, archive it, and keep these examples handy. Thank you for watching.